detective, no police officer, no DA, nobody. Just arrested and then charged. Arrested and charged, that's it. Was the first time you saw Kamala Harris in person the day that the verdict was issued? She showed up at the two most pivotal times in this first trial and me being convicted and me being sentenced. She wanted to be present for a celebration of a, of a conviction. That's what it felt like, a that's celebration? A celebration, that's what it felt like. The reaction I get when I tell people my story is, they say it's, it's the worst nightmare. You know, it's the closest thing to dying. You know, I want to read you a, a quote real quick. The job of a progressive prosecutor is to look out for those overlooked, to speak up for those whose voices aren't being heard, to see and address the causes of crime, not just their consequences, and to shine a light on the inequality and unfairness that leads to injustice. It is to recognize that not everyone needs punishment. What many need, quite obviously, is help. Kamala Harris wrote that uh, in her book, The Truths We Hold. Uh, does that sound consistent with the kind of with, with the brand of justice that you saw administered by offices that she was running? It definitely sounds like Kamala Harris right now as a senator, but at the time of her being the head district attorney of San Francisco, that is almost polar opposite of what I felt and what our community felt in San Francisco. This is my rally. Uh, right now, we are at Sunnydale Projects, where I was born and raised at. Now, this isn't a place that you, you'll want to bring outsiders into, in a place that they don't want to go. This ain't a place that feels comfortable. It feels like you might get robbed. You might get shot. Police were keeping files on you, your brothers, and other people who were living in San Diego from a very young age. They are ha already have me labeled because I'm in this community as a potential gang member, potential killer, potential drug dealer. You gotta wake up to the fact that, you know, things are set up against us. There is a conspiracy. Yes. It's happened to you. Exactly. There it's is proven in court. Absolutely. Places like this have been developed for predominantly African American people to not be able to succeed beyond it. Yeah. What did you know about Kamala Harris? What did you know about San Francisco having a, a black DA? Nobody in the hood ever worried or focused on the DA position in general, but people did focus on it just a tad bit that it was black and felt like, okay, this black lady in office, Kamala Harris, she was going to understand where we come from, you know, and have more of a sympathetic way of prosecuting people that come from our community mm -hmm. who have been plagued with no opportunities. This is Hunter's Point, where these different uh, projects and communities used to really war with each other. Jamal, well, in July 2007, what's going on in your life at that point? I have recently just came off of I Love New York, and also that's when my friend Sel Cooker got killed. More than a year goes by, and no one's been arrested in the case. You haven't even been questioned. I haven't even been questioned, no. The police were still, you know, trying to get a conviction by all means necessary. When I was arrested for it, the community knew I didn't do it. And it was a, here we go again. See, this is why we don't trust you no know, law enforcement because it gets to a point where somebody who didn't do something goes to jail for it. I don't have no history of crime. You know what? I have a history of being around in the community. But that doesn't mean that I'm a suspect. I'm like, oh, man, I'll be out within 72 hours. They're going to figure this out. They're going to clear this up. And then when you found out what the evidence was that they supposedly had you, uh, can you there wasn't much there. Can you describe what it was? They had a, a woman saying that she seen me uh, kill Sam. The second witness that they had really wasn't a witness at all. 
she said anything that the police officers wanted her to say, and they said that her recollection of the of the events was extremely credible. So that's what ultimately got the arrest warrant. The district attorney of San Francisco, Kamala Harris, appeared in the courtroom during your trial twice. Yeah, the two times that Kamala Harris um, sh showed up to my trial was the when I got convicted and also when they laid down the sentencing. When you saw her on the day that the verdict was handed down, did you take that as a bad sign? It, it felt to me that she was well aware about my case and she was there to set her presence, almost take pride in getting a conviction. When I put in my appeal, the people that's fighting against my appeal to keep the conviction is the attorney the general office. I learned it reading, you know, their their reply to my uh, appeal, and you see Kamala Harris' name at the bottom. And now it, it's starting to feel a little personal. When you win the $13.1 million, it's a massive settlement. Did you feel like that was enough? There's not an amount that could get back those seven years that uh, was six and a half years that I spent in prison. But instead of me coming home feeling like I was a victim, I wanted to prove that, I was, that I'm a survivor and I will not let my story go unheard. You know, I'm not necessarily saying I'm looking for an apology, but some acknowledgement from her that she could have messed up will be, of course, that'd be huge. You could have made some mistakes. You could have missed some things. For me, it was a big miss. You know, I had life in prison. I've met people in prison that was wrongfully convicted. I want my story to be out to provoke reform, ultimately. Beyond that, I want to be able to be who I want to be. I'm an actor. You know, I'm a musician, I'm a father, I'm more than this person that was friends.